Welcome back to the fifth and possibly final review of The Purge. Um, this one was for the Fe Forever Purge that just came out four days ago, July the 2nd, 2021. Great movie, um, great movie. Yeah, yeah. It, it Go was watch a good it, movie. take the family, have a great time. And then subscribe movie. to the channel. Subscribe and like, turn on bell notifications, and send <laughs> okay. it to your friends. It's a little too much. We don't want them to do all that. Actually, yeah, if you guys want to, that'd be great. Yeah, but you're trying to anyway, grow it, man. That, that is true. That is true. So uh, I'm going to right out right out the gate, Steven. I want you to rank them in your opinion. I've written mine down uh, so we know which ones mine are, and I you can't change them. You wrote them down after I said my list. No, I wrote them down. At, okay, whatever. But anyway, the point is, I want you to say, from one being the best to five being the worst in the franchise, uh, list the, the movies. All right, let's get started. After, then can we rank this movie out yeah, of yeah. ten? Okay. Yeah, just... All right, so first movie for me is Purge Anarchy 2014. Great movie. I love Frank Grillo's character. I love Leo, Leo's character and how they develop it throughout the story of Purge Anarchy. So, number one, Purge Anarchy 2014. Number two, The Forever Purge 2021. I loved just the how it shows the complete destruction of the new founding fathers of America's experiment mm -hmm. after it being reinstated and how the purge just doesn't end. A bunch of crazy right-wing racial groups go around and keep the purge alive. And I really like the story. And it had... Uh, a more of an international element to it with the fact that they're trying to get to either American citizens or trying to seek refuge in the northern neighboring country of Canada and the southern neighboring country of Mexico. Um, third movie, we go... Um, sorry, I don't know why I'm blanking. Third movie, we go The First Purge, 2017 it came out. Uh. Yeah, 2017 is the first purge. That's, um, no, that's when it's set. That's when it's okay, set. Sorry, it comes out in year. 2018. Yes, so f the first purge, 2018. Great how they explain the first uh, experiment in the New Founding Fathers' rise to power mm -hmm. and their crazy radical experiment they test out on Staten Island, New York. Um, great elements. And the fifth movie... No, fifth. Okay. The fifth movie, uh, last one is, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's fourth. Fourth yeah, movie, yeah. Purge Election Year. Great continuation, and it shows the downfall that we first see, I mean, of the new founding fathers of America, and it shows, like, the greaterness of, like, humanity mm -hmm. per, uh, prevailing in the face of this crazy group power hungry regime um that's why i give it the fourth and then the last one in my ranking at number five sits the first purge i mean as when i say the first purge i mean the first one to come out in just the purge 2013 again sets it up gets you hooked starts the franchise so those are my rankings now khalil yeah, so I was what, gonna. What are your rankings based off your own original thoughts? Yeah, so I was going to uh, to make a little Google sheet and put it up there so we can compare them and you guys can see, but it's legitimately the same. I have Anarchy at the top, uh, just because I like that it switched to uh, kind of a more working class and like uh, like normal people type of view on the purge. I think it was great, especially after the original purge and showing that more elite mentality and how they can even suffer during the purge. Um, and then I have Forever Purge, just because, and honestly, I thought this was going to be my third choice for the first, like, half of the movie, and then it really kicked into high gear. Oh, my God. And we'll, we'll talk go about watch. it, we'll talk about it after, after I go through the rankings, but it really kicked into high go gear that watch last and subscribe. half. And so, it put it over the third choice for me, so it's my second choice. Uh, like Steven said, my third choice is the first Purge, just because I, I really liked the cast in there i thought the story was a lot more concise than election and i i just i liked that uh, m just movie in general i flip like i know in the last review i said i was flip-flopping between first and second but i think after thinking about it for a little more it is my kind of third choice after watching these five in total uh, my fourth choice is election year just because i didn't quite i wish that they had just gone with something to like a totally new 
Like, I know it was really only Frank Grillo as the return, but I wish they just kind of went with something totally new. It wasn't really harping on the other movie. Like, it was just kind of a new thing. Like, these other four were all different casts and different things, so I, li I liked them because of that. Um, and that kind of made it unique, almost. And so that's why Election is the fourth one. Uh, the, f the fifth one and final one is the original Purge, the 2013 one that started it all. It still, obviously, is the only reason that these four can be <laughs> above it. But, and which I think is a good thing that that one is the last one because that means they did improve with each of these even if some of them fell short of others um but yeah so that's that's my uh thing there uh yeah so yeah. to uh you said that purge election year is your fourth one yeah. do you and you most of it's because they do have one returning actor do you it's, also for me why i put it there was just because of the fact it didn't seem too realistic. And I know it's mm. a movie made up of people being able to kill each other for 12 hours straight and yeah. it being legal. But I just felt like the um, there'd be so much more protection for Senator Charlie Rohn. No, but fact, that's... I, I really thought that didn't... I, I just thought it was kind of corny in the sense that she, like, gets saved by, you know... Yeah, but the the whole thing was that there was a plot against her, so it doesn't make sense for her to have like I think I think that one is realistic in the setting, just because they wanted her to die. Why would and they give the her more protection? People, like you think they would just but, shoot her instead of them? No, because they wanted the to purge. do the big sacrifice and be like, we are holier than thou. But so I think that's fine for me. It wasn't it wasn't just that it was the returning actor. It was that the plot, like obviously the main plot points of it were like fresh where it's like okay you're protecting this other senator it just felt like other movies like it it felt like, like white, white house, house down, down. yeah wow. exactly. or olympus has fallen yeah and it, it kind of felt like that just kind of an off brand of that and like this one because they brought frank Grillo back obviously you know his backstory you know what happened so that kind of just i'm like took me out of it it's like okay so this is like uh 17 years after that what why are you here like that type of thing so it just kind of lost me there so you're but saying that, we're not yeah yeah no go uh, i was just gonna say uh that that that's that's the reason it's fourth for me it's it's more than just the it's what the one actor kind of does for the movie but um i do want to get into the review for the forever Purge wait so do you feel that okay if uh purge election year is a knockoff of white house down do you feel that then white uh white house uh, what? Sorry, White House Down is a knockoff. So wait, the Purge well, election Olympus year is a knockoff yeah. of White House Down, which is a knockoff as Olympus has fallen. Is what you're saying? Not really, but I mean, I, I just think the, I mean, those two movies are different, but I, I just, I, well, same, 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 exactly, exact same premise, but they're they were like made and everything. But yeah, I just kind of want let's get into the, the actual review for the Forever Purge, but I. I understand what you're saying, and like, but that that is a thing where it's like this thing's been Hollywood done. Hollywood copying each other <laughs> multiple multiple times, not a new. Only thing. way they can get new uh, n new content. Cash but anyway, cow. That's a so the Forever Purge kind of starts off with this, uh, this just group of uh, like Mexican citizens that essentially cross under a cartel tunnel through to to America, and they're like, we're gonna live in America. It's gonna be great. There's no more purge everyone's like doing well they awesome. weren't concerned about the purge they just felt like they explained later well, they were on running away the cartel from cartels yeah and it forced them off their land and that's how uh how they got there yeah or why they ran away um because they were being, th being threatened and everything but it was um it was pretty cool because you kind of at least in the beginning i'm like okay where's this going type thing and they they bring it through and they're talking about like purity of the nation and like purifying it yeah, through the purge it's more and so you, right wing yeah and so you eventually like so this man uh he's working on a ranch his name is juan yeah uh juan is working on the ranch um of and the then, tucker family which is a rich uh rancher texas family. rancher family living in uh, yes yeah. i'm gonna honestly kind of skip through the beginning of it just because i was kind of like I was not underwhelmed, but I was like, okay, this is whatever, because I, I do think that it really the movie starts at the after it. Yeah, and it's small town USA, some little like farming town in Texas, and yeah. it shows just basically the ba different backgrounds of like the contrasting between the migrant family, how they kind of scrape by for every dollar, and then how the rich, you know, more established Texan family they uh you know they basically abuse their their. Uh, they basically turn them into indentured servitudes in well, a way where they have to. Well, not necessarily. That's what he's talking about in the very before they shoot him. 
um, because it's like you there there is no escaping from this because you keep a you keep the this dude that eventually kills the main the, the father the which family. is Caleb Tucker. Um, he he eventually is just talking about how like you keep us to the point where we have to work for you otherwise we starve and our families will starve and there's nothing we can do so that's kind of what they're talking about but i'm just going to kind of like i mean it, it is an important message but i feel like we've talked about it a lot throughout the past like three reviews because it is being brought up pretty heavily but i just want to point out that yeah. caleb was uh will Patton, very, who is no he very uh he's very generous and actually oh, does pay saying. them whereas he's not like the rest of you know like Again, when they, I think he just like Caleb explains that you're going after the wrong quote unquote rich family, and it's the people in Washington who he then kind of calls the guy who kills him a hypocrite and saying yeah. that you're going along with what they're saying, but you're against them, but you're taking it out on the wrong family, which, which I is, thought was a very interesting it, message. Yeah, it's interesting, and because what eventually ends up happening after um, after Adila and. Uh, Juan and uh, what was it? who is their friend? Um, I forget who they had a friend also. Um, but those three basically survived the night in this like purge protection area, which is a new thing because this is the first year the purge is being reinstated. Because essentially what happened is that uh, Roan, uh, after her eight years in office, she her party didn't win again, and so the NFFA got reinstated and they instantly redid the purge. So this is kind of that situation here. And they set up a protection area, area, not the NFFA, but like just people have. So they you pay them, and then they guard you, uh, in just a massive facility. And uh, I would also like to have known more in this movie. So when they first created the experiment, it was because of rampant, you know, unemployment, rampant inflation, and, like, high crime, crime and rates. Everything, yeah. So they, I mean, I, although their justifications were horrible, and like, but they did tell the nation they had a reason for putting in the purge. So then I, w- I would have liked to know more of the lore behind, okay, Charlie Roan has lost. What did she accomplish in her eight years of office? And Doesn't why did like the anything. NFFA were able to get reelected and have the justifications again to reinstate such a drastic measure as the purge? Yeah, normally I do enjoy lore. I've, I've talked about it a lot in the like past few movies, but I, for me, I don't think I really needed that much of it because it was like a quick, like, like go through in the very beginning of the movie it's like okay she lost they got reinstated and it, it doesn't sound like she accomplished anything because then Besides her party would have been purge. put in yeah getting rid of the purge for eight years and you know making it so like you they tested that out and then the nffa got re- reinstated so i don't know it, it doesn't sound like she did too much um afterwards but it's uh uh it's interesting because they kind of go through that and then you have these uh, people that um, essentially are like uh, they just believe in like purity of America, so essentially white power. And yes, one hundred percent. And yeah, they no, believe that anyone who's not American citizen or or doesn't believe. So these are the people that do the forever purge. So anyone that doesn't believe in the forever purge and is not white. Basically, or an American or citizen. essentially, they get killed. They get killed. Yeah, they will kill them. Um, and, and the so, NFFA does, they do backtrack, and after they see that big major cities are, you know, being overrun, they do send in the military, but then mm-hmm. there are just so many people who continue purging, whether yeah. they believe in the ever purge or they just are crazy. Which I thought was kind of funny. Not funny, like, but just, like, so odd, because I'm like... Gunshot. You're, like, because they declare it, so the NFFA basically almost immediately... When they realized that these major cities were being overrun by these forever purgers, they just declared martial law, and they're just like, okay, we're sending the army, we're sending the military, we're gonna shut this down. This is this is not what the the purge is about. But they can't fight back, and they lose. Yeah, they essentially they they lose a lot of people in El Paso, and so um, that that happened. But so Canada and Mexico opened the border for six hours to let anyone through, and then after the six hours, they shut yeah, it down. Yeah, who's ever unarmed and. That's why El Paso fell, because a lot of the forever purges who were part of the white power groups immediately go to intercept any, whether they be American citizens or anyone living in the country, trying to get over the border into either yeah. Mexico or Canada. They just kill them because they're they like, not for the country. And so then that's why what forces their hands that the NFFA does send in the militia. I mean, the National Guard, they lose. Mexico shuts down their borders. So then the main group 
that follows it the the main group followed in the movie the Tucker family and the ranch hands as Juan and his wife Adela and their friend are now stuck in El Paso and like pretty much in a city under siege by just the crazy right wing forever purges people who are just still purging and yeah. the military and then real quick I do want to say that. Um, so essentially, the, this family, like we talked about, so you have Caleb Tucker, Tucker, who's Will Patton, who's a known actor, a Netflix actor, um, but he's kind of the head of the Coach ranch. And he gets, Titans. yeah, and well, yeah, yeah, and he gets, uh, he gets killed at the very beginning. You have uh, Cassidy Freeman, who's playing Emma Kate, who's the girl from Longmire, the the daughter of uh, Longmire. Yep. Um, Katie Longmire. Kate, thank you, Katie Longmire. Uh, you have uh, Adela, who's I don't I don't recognize the actress, but um, she it's her, Emma. Uh, you have <clears throat> Dylan Tucker, who's uh, Emma Kate's wife. A little bit racially insensitive at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, but then he well sees he, the, yeah, yeah. He, he just didn't like the fact that Juan, the the ranch hand that they hired, yeah, uh, you know, shows him up. He's more hardworking. And he's better with horses, and he doesn't have a temper, unlike Dylan. Yeah. Because it begins with Dylan getting kicked in the ribs by a horse, and then they have to call in Juan to calm the horse down. I thought that was a ridiculous scene. I, was I thought like, it was what pretty funny, because it does show that he doesn't like, you know, he doesn't like being, he wanted to be the hero in front of yeah. his wife. and his father and, and his everything. And his father, yeah. and he's trying to get his father's approval. Yeah. And, uh... And then, kind of, kind of, yeah, I agree with you, and then he has a sister named Harper Tucker... And then obviously uh, Juan's friend, who I don't I don't know his name I don't remember it, but that's kind of the group that's traveling together. Um, and Emma is who is Dylan's wife is pregnant as they're traveling, so she's she kind of goes through that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you I thought I know you had a different thing. I thought that uh, Juan's friend was gonna die. I thought Dylan was gonna die. I thought uh, either. Juan or Adela was going to die. I didn't think both of them would die. So I thought three people were going to die in this six-person group. Uh, you were saying uh, that... I don't know if you want to say it or... I thought Dylan was going to die. And that... Um, what was... I just thought Dylan was going to die. But yeah. then I realized that they kind of needed him. You know, as a... Like to show the... Uh, how someone can go from a little bit clouded in his own judgments to more... Uh, you know, it shows his evolution as a human and as an yeah. American over the span of the film towards the, even at the end, where at the beginning of the movie, he talks about how he doesn't want his kids speaking Spanish, and then he thanks Juan and Adela when they're across the border and safe, and as they f reunite with the rest of the group, uh, he says, thank he says, gracias, which is, again, thank you in Spanish. Yeah, and that's kind of his way of completing his arc. Yeah. And it, it, it is, it's a good arc there. Um, just because he's not, and he says it later, he's not a flat out racist. He's just intolerant, kind of, of other cultures, and so that's his way of embracing other cultures. Yes. Um, which I think is very important. That's kind of what the bedrock, and I'm not gonna touch on this too much, but the bedrock of America is like the fact that we everyone is from a different area and different background, and it's all those differences that kind of make us strong as yeah. a country. And which is kind of what Adela talks about. Yeah, and because of one, not full, not as much as Dylan. Both of them don't really vocal. embrace. Yeah, they don't really embrace it because she talks about how you could come from anywhere, and he's kind of like, "Yeah, right." And that's when they're locked down in the purge compound. Yeah. But I mean, it's just craziness. This movie was like showed you what would happen if this experiment, you yeah. know, just couldn't be controlled. Which I mean, realistically, I feel like if you gave people free reign for twelve hours, maybe not in the Why first. Why do they stop? Yeah. Maybe not in the first Staten Island, New York one, where you know, like you have to stop because you're returning back to a country, you know, yeah, that yeah. doesn't have this. But I feel like after the first purge, you know, it's people's first experiences out doing whatever they do or not do. Yeah. I just think that it was just funny how it shows that how at the end of the movie they talk about how the NFFA, which is you know, the U.S. government can't do anything. And now there's the NFFA trying to stop the people who are forever purges, purgers. Plus, they're also trying to stop pe regular everyday Americans who didn't necessarily believe in the purge, who are now, you know, trying to, you know, rebuild the country. Mm -hmm. And it shows America on a, like, through the globe, and it blankens out. And that's why I think, Khalil disagrees, there is going to be 
another movie because I think it's going to be the rebuilding of America in the final fall of the NFFA. I called it here on the Do You Purge Movie Review podcast. So everyone, so I called it. At the end of the movie, it is basically that ordinary citizens, which I thought this was, like, it's kind of ridiculous to me that these forever purges re- even rose to power to begin with. But it's at the end of the movie, it's like, the ordinary citizens are, like, rising up and uh, revolting, essentially, against the forever purges because the NFFA has essentially been somewhat defeated, like, militarily. Like, they've just retreated, basically, to D.C. Um, like, they still, obviously, are the administration and everything. But, yeah, so I, I disagree with Steven. I think that this is the final movie. I think it's a good final movie for the franchise. Um, and so... I so need I'm gonna, closure. Yeah, so we're going to we're gonna see who's closure. right. So uh, I did search it up. I haven't looked up. at it. I haven't looked at this yet, but we need closure. Yeah, everyone. so it says it says right here. You want to read that, Steve? <laughs> to the top part there. Oh, read it out loud. The Forever yeah. Purge is a 2021 American action horror film that is the fifth and final film of the Purge franchise and serves as a direct sequel to 2016's The Purge comma election year wow yeah i didn't think that was gonna be the end but i guess it does kind of say you know people are rising up and i'm sure it seemed like it was wrapping it yeah and that's kind of it seemed like it was wrapping it up so uh it's the it's the end of a great franchise so i guess this is the fifth and final (laughs) review of the purge franchise my last review yeah final one you were wrong on this so we have to kick you off Um, but (laughs) but anyway um so quick uh quick thing here i want to get into the stats of this movie at an 18 million dollar budget which is the biggest yet but that has been the trend of these movies they just keep getting bigger and bigger obviously it's only been out for four days but the box office totals already are 19.4 million dollars in four days um so i think it it could be on trajectory to possibly overtake the other one we won't know for sure like it is obviously theaters have been returned like they're kind of returning now it's getting like kind of in that state where more people are going out and actually going to theater. So it could hurt from not too many people going out and actually watching it. So I don't know if it will reach uh, what uh, the first Purge or election year uh, uh, reached, with, which it surpassed, both of them surpassed 100 mil um, in the box office. But I think I think it will definitely, kind of, it's on that trajectory. It's almost 20 mil in four days. Yeah. How much was their budget? $18 million. So okay. they've made up their budget. Yep. So that's basically the biggest budget. I don't know if you. I think it's follow. the biggest by five million. Actually. Yeah, I mean the lowest one. I can't believe this whole franchise started off with a uh, three, million three million budget for the 2013 yeah. The Purge, and that it just grows. And I feel like again, this is the most realistic horror story that could happen to con- our country because you know zombies yeah. and aliens and they and you know, well I guess not disease but like <laughs> well yeah but but this yeah. one especially because they actually do make a point they. They do go into somewhat, and it's it's uh, it's obviously it's kind of weird to think about because it is somewhat like political stuff. Just like they they reflect the real world because this movie was filmed, I believe, in twenty nineteen and twenty twenty. Um, no, it was filmed in twenty nineteen and twenty eighteen because the movie got pushed back a year, I believe. So it was supposed to come out in twenty twenty, but it came out in twenty twenty one. COVID um, baby. Yep, exactly. But that's why I think I agree with you. I think it's the most realistic, and it kind of touches on that. Civil Civil Wars type story that people were afraid was going to happen after 2020, uh, which I think our country's stronger than that, but that's a different like conversation right there. Yeah, but, man, this is an NPR politics podcast. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I just think overall this. Oh, and uh, so essentially, you kind of go through that. You talk about El Paso, uh, and then uh, the leader of a Native American tribe uh, that is on the border between also U.S. and Longmire Mexico. Also, actor. He is. Matthias. Yeah, he's Matthias from Longmire. So uh, quite a few uh, Netflix actors in here, yep. which is pretty sick yep. to see, because uh, they were good actors in Longmire. You should watch Longmire. Uh, <laughs> but they, he essentially takes them to his his area, uh, his his uh, tribal land, the reservation. And then he allows them to cross over, but there's this group of Forever Purges that's hunting uh, Juan specifically because he killed the leader of the group's like mistress. Yeah, wife. mistress. Wife, We're not gonna mom. get into it. Watch yeah. it. Cover but, your kids' ears if you're there. With yeah. Them. Oh, bro. This I think this movie particularly was the most gruesome out of any oh, of the Purge movies. Yeah. They they leveled it up. It was crazy. I mean, they burned Maybe it was America the big to the ground. Yeah, literally. They literally like it like it's insane. And then they say there's two million deaths. Yeah, yeah, two and that million was only deaths. Within, like, 
and that's, 72 that's, hours after the commencement of just that, you know, regular 12-hour purge. Yeah, which is, I mean, it's a little less, I guess, than like 1% of the population, but it's still 2 million deaths And I'm sure it's 72 that was just hours. Only, I, that's just the beginning. Because, I mean, you see the breakdown of local yeah. law enforcement. Because, I mean, the sheriff's trying to get, like, he's like at first, like, did not, not it's everyone hear the siren. Yeah, it's quite, exactly. And it's quite interesting, too, because this, uh, this white supremacist group who are the forever purgers are essentially just like, Anyone that's part of government in any way, if they're a cop, if they're a firefighter, like if they're the NFA army that's going in to try to stomp them, they will kill anyone who's part of the government. And like just why, especially because the NFFA is basically ran or used to be, I don't know now, because I guess to your point, they didn't get into lore that much about them, but used to be run by white supremacy. It was a white supremacist ideology in the group, even though it was like somewhat subliminal, it was still there. Yeah, and the but, purge was essentially built upon the idea of like elitist power. Yeah, but it would still end after every twelve hours, whereas yeah. now they don't even have control over their dumb experiments. <laughs> yeah, and now it's just forever chaos. And I think that again, eight years of pent. I guess purge. this is a great, you know, this is a great finale. I yeah, really wish I they, agree. if they did make another one, I would not be upset. Just to I, finish off the series. I would be because then I'm wrong. But <laughs> yeah, but again, had a great time doing all these and. uh I really enjoyed rewatching some of these Purge movies. And uh, Khalil, any final thoughts on the Purge series and whether or the pur- Forever Purge? Yeah, so I uh, just final thoughts here. Um, I w- I wasn't sure about these movies. Uh, this is the first time I've watched them, and then we've recorded these reviews. So I, I was unsure coming into it. Uh, I- I've been pleasantly surprised by them. I think it's a good Very piece of strong. cinema. Yeah, exactly, and it's a good layout. Uh, and then the person that's created the concept who's written the screenplays for all of these movies again is james demonico uh he's been he's been great in them at, at, like actually creating the stories and building this and really like having original. an actual story that's fulfilled in five it's movies. it's not really based off i mean like maybe not based he off, got like, maybe he stuff, pulled but... maybe like he pulled from other movies but i really think it's just like one of the few in the past you know couple of decades that you know or original concepts and not played off of, except for yeah. election year, as we Khalil thinks it's a knockoff <laughs> of a knockoff. Well, I th- I think it I think it has stuff that's been um, that's been done before, but um, with realistic elements of human behavior, specifically the United States where it's set in. Yeah. So I guess we'll we'll finish this review off by Stephen. I'll let you go first. Numbers wise, what would you rank this movie in general? I know we've already listed them compared but to the wise. other. Just, no, just, just as a movie. 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10, Maybe really? 9.2, not to go 9.5, but maybe 9.2. Great I, movie. Yeah. Definitely worth the money to watch it. Even oh, yeah. Even if you go definitely. watch it at a luxury theater and, you know, pay $100 for snacks. Yeah. Um, I I would rank, and I know I've been, I've been tougher on movies than you have been in this in this review thing. I would rank this, I think, compared compared to other movies, like in the general scheme of things, with what it is, I would probably rank it a seven point five. Oh um, my god! That's Not generous even the for me. Final, I know this is what makes this work because Khalil's very. Uh, and I, I was even thinking a seven, but I'm like, it is, it is the final, and they actually did a good final. Just give it a seven point like, eight. Okay, fine, it's a seven. Uh, <laughs> but no. I mean, the Rotten Tomato score here is a forty six percent from critics. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is from the. The, the audience, but I feel like they've been pretty people, close. I feel like more people will like it more than the dumb critic. Possibly. I mean, they've been pretty close in both the movies, but uh, I do think this was a, a good finale for The Purge. It's been it's been great having you on these uh, reviews. I'm glad this was the, the first little movie reviews we've done. And... Too bad he's, you're kicking me off. Yeah, guys, I mean, if you, were you, if you want the... me, if you keep, if you want me, Put spam the comments, the comments <laughs> section. No, but seriously, this has been great, and... Uh, Again, The Purge, great series. Watch it. Maybe not with the younger kids, but yeah. uh, happy purging. And yeah, let us time. Uh, let me know what uh, what other movie series or franchises or just movies in general you want me to review. I got a list. That's co- and a few movies are coming out soon or like reviews are coming out soon. Uh, but yeah, it's been a pleasure, guys. Uh, right. Talk to y'all Good soon. Night. Thanks, Steven.